uh, we've been doing these. If anybody wants to know, they join us for the first time, especially on Facebook. We get a lot of new people on Facebook. Uh, we do this question response is um, we have been doing like certain topics. Uh, we have been doing topics, just overall questions, general questions. So what and today is basically about what we've been talking about the last couple of weeks, meeting face to face in this relationship. And what does it really mean? Uh, we took a lot of your questions. Some of the questions that I know we have been submitted pertain to this. I'm going to kind of a little off, but we just said we'll include it anyways. Um, but the purpose is that, especially people on Facebook, you can ask questions, and anybody here can ask questions. Um, it's not just pertaining to what we put on the screen, uh, it's to have discussion and talk. We, we, and we say response because we don't have answers. We're not we gurus. We ourselves. Are. Yeah, we're not gurus. We're just uh, children of somebody who loves us, and um, and we go from there. So, um, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, I hope everybody's enjoying themselves. I hope everybody's surviving the storms, um, especially here in Richmond. It's been kind of crazy. Um, sorry, we heard one of our friends who got flooded again. Their house got flooded again yesterday uh, for a second time in about two weeks, or t or two and a half or three weeks. Um, very unfortunate, especially here in Richmond, you get a lot of rain and it builds up. Um, we're supposed to get a little more rain today and looking outside right in this moment and like, ugh, everybody please be safe, be cautious. Uh, we can gather, but we can also gather electronically like we do on Facebook Live. Um, so we want to make sure everybody stays safe. That's the most important thing. We'll just risk our own lives and let ourselves get swept away by the waters. But just, just a joke. I know you give me that evil eye. Uh, but, so yes, so we, we got a long filled day today. Um, we look forward to the cookout we have, sharing it with people and stuff as well. Um, I have stuff here that we can look at. We have all your questions, especially on Facebook Live. We have your questions here that come up right here. We can talk to you as well. Uh, and another thing too, uh, so it's exciting. This is exciting, because we talked about this a couple weeks ago. I'm kind of getting right into it, because I don't know, I'm hungry. Um, You're of, always hungry. I'm always hungry. Uh, you feed me well, babe. You, you feed me well. I'm very proud of you. You do a very good job of that. Um, I'm going to stand up right now because I just feel like it. Um, we got these questions together. We've been talking about face-to-face. -face. We've been talking about this relationship. If, you didn't know, if you're new to any of this, uh, in John 1-1 it says that the word was with, it was, you know, was with God. And that with there means to be face-to-face. -face. And it's talking about this relationship. We know the word is Jesus Christ. He's face to face with that, and we have the Holy Spirit here in this beautiful relationship between the, the, between the three of them. And it says he was face to face. And what we talked about the last couple of weeks is that Jesus came so we could be with him right here. And this is very important. This is the core, if you want to say Christianity, the core of the gospel is that Jesus came to put us here. So then we can now be face to face with that. And had the Holy Spirit with us to guide us and help us. It's like, he, it, this is beautiful because I love this, this, this take on we're face to face that. And he's like here holding his hand saying, come on, like, it's going to be okay. Let me teach you. Let me show you. And that's what we were talking about. We were talking about in Christ, I think last week, what it means to be the end game, whatever cheesy as it is. Um, we talked about that. We talked about how in this being in Christ, the Holy Spirit is really helping us to be sons and daughters to that. And really teaching us what it means to be face to face. And how he sees us, because how he sees us affects us how we then respond back. And how we respond back to him is then how we respond to each other. Like this is so much more than just here as a, we think, as individual personal relationship. The Bible never says anything about personal relationship. It means relationship. And it means not just, it doesn't just stay here, it goes out. When Jesus said, or when Peter says, holy be be holy, for I am holy, which is reference to oh, he's talking about here. This is holy. This relationship is holy. It means it's not like you and I, and it's totally different how we act. We we are selfish. We choose right and wrong for ourselves in that relationship. I'm going to do that what's best for me, and I'm based on what you do and how or how I feel. And it's never about uh, about you. It's always about me. This relationship is always about each other. Jesus doesn't look for himself. He looks for what pleases dad and pleases the spirit. The spirit does the opposite, does the same. He does, he does what pleases Jesus, pleases dad. And dad, does, and dad does what pleases Jesus and pleases the Holy Spirit. 
they're all trying to build up each other. They're always lifting up each other. They're always doing what's right for the other, not for themselves. And what's so unique about this, because of that, Jesus be who he is. <laughs> and we get to see that. Dad gets to be who he is. Like the, We get to see that. And what we learned last week is that when this becomes part of our lives, we ain't being who we truly are. And that's so important. So this is where the, a lot of questions came from. You can submit questions on this too as well. You, can, you don't have to just submit a question. You can comment on the question. You have input or something you feel like the Holy Spirit is rubbing up in you because that's so important because he might be talking to you and he might be helping all of us. Um, maybe helping all of us here. So we're going to get started uh, with some of the questions. We'll get started. i got to get my beautiful kid face here. She looks so adorable. And I think the first question that we had is how do you explain the Trinity? I think we kind of just explained that. I think it was kind of just relevant what we just talked here. Probably, we forgot to remember the question. So I'll probably just go up there. But this is the Trinity here. Dad, our son, Dad, Spirit. And this beautiful relationship that they have. And it's so unique and so uncommon to us that it's so different. So we'll kind of bypass that unless you want to add some more to it. That was, that was good. Okay. We, we kind of held that one off the head. Uh, we'll go to the next one because I think this one's beautiful. Um, is there any way to lose your salvation? Two-part question. What about people who never hear the gospel? Okay. So, you want to take the first? You want to take it? Um, I want the second part. No, there is no way to lose your salvation once it's been received um it, it's it's really interesting what is salvation by the way <laughs> Whole, wholeness um then what is wholeness, then what is wholeness then? Yeah. i'll take it i'm just trying to i know sometimes people have questions about salvation okay it's wholeness what is wholeness it's jesus so is there any way to lose it lose jesus lose the father lose the the spirit no, if he, if, you know, it's interesting that before we even existed or knew we even existed, he already had everything planned out, worked out. Um, it just had it manifested. So if he had everything in place, um, how could this slip past him? You know what I mean? Um, so I like, uh, I want to comment on one part you said. You said Jesus is salvation. It's Jesus. Wholeness is Jesus. And a lot of people would agree and say, because 1 Corinthians 131 says, Jesus is our was it, wisdom, per se. He is our salvation, our wholeness. And, and what does that truly mean? I heard some moaning, groaning. Um, <laughs> Donna still picked up their head. What does that mean? It means, that we, I think we talked about a couple weeks, that we talked about last week, that in Christ's part, being in Him means the relationship. This is, brings us wholeness. The fact that he's our wholeness is that we get to be seated with him before dad and get to be part of the relationship. If you're in him and he does no wrong and you're in him, how could you lose that? If you never put yourself there in the first place. Yeah, you can't. You're in him. If you're in him, you can't. Huh? You can't be lost. You can't be lost in him. So. so is there any way to lose your salvation? And the answer is no. So what about people who never hear the gospel? And I, I like and I like this to say it's all. I got this to go this over to the thing. We were just talking about this yesterday. To sit there and say, well, we never can preach that. Can you help? Um, to to sit there and say that no one if, if somebody doesn't get here, oh. uh, if to so say that, that no no one hears the gospel is to say that it has to come in words uh, in words and my question is if that was the case if it had to come into words and yet um, and no one went to say an, an African tribe deep into Africa. Then they're gone, right? They're done. Hey, turn it down, baby. Um, 
uh, if that, the system say that, um, that means they're gone, they're lost, they're done. And how does that make him look, if that's the case? Like, the system say that I, me and you have to go preach the gospel deep into Africa because, because of it, and therefore they die, they're, they're gone, is to say he just loses people left and right on purpose. And I'm like, that, that, that does not sound like him. It's still loud. Um, <laughs> turn it down. Turn it down. Uh, theme music. We got some theme music going on. There you go. Um, to say, he, he just loses us. He just, I mean, he, he, like, do I think it's important for us to go out and talk? Yes. But, but, but there's way, there's so much to it. We were just talking about this yesterday. My mom will give up her last morsel of food so that you will be you be full and taken care of, and yet she will be left out. But she doesn't sit there and do it and then gripe about it. She sits there and bask and join us of you being full. It's like that's her her that's, food. Yeah, it's like that's her food, and I'm like th this is true because she <laughs> my wife gave. Gave us her last, her last Starbucks iced uh, coffee, right? Vanilla coffee, and to sit there and say like, uh, we, but you have to understand my mom, like that, she loves vanilla coffee from Starbucks. That's just her, and she just gave it away, and it was like, you enjoy it, you like it, and you know, hey, make sure Cree gets some, you know, like you, you know what I'm saying? Like she was basking in it, and like that reminds me of somebody, Jesus, Holy Spirit, Dad. And that act, whether she knows it or not, dad is demonstrating himself. They're demonstrating themselves. Do her act of giving up her last morsel. Okay, okay. Um, to give up her last morsel. And just so the citizens say that I have to go fly my plane, airplane. I'm not going to say something. <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be wrong of me to say that. To go find my airplane to the deep depths of Africa just so that I can preach to that so so make you hear it is not true. But because all the people that died before. Yeah, and then see that goes into play there. He demonstrates himself. Did he not demonstrate himself to David at times to David? Did that not come out? Didn't that come through Abraham when Abraham put the wood stack on his son Isaac and they went up the hill? Did that demonstrate this? He was still speaking, but he was not speaking with words. It was actions. It was love poured out. You, you're, so you're telling me that no one, no tribe in Africa, we, we were saying this, or, or, or tribes in deep parts of South America or wherever, there's no one there distributing the gospel. The God, God, dad can't just be inspiring them, they, whether you know or not. And somebody goes, I've never seen love. Why? Why do you love me after I what I've done for you? And they probably like, and it starts a hook. It's a hook. So this is to say that I have to go out there. Stopping voice control. Stopping voice control. Yes. I did that. Was, that was so timely, considering what we're talking about here. That, that that I have to. There is intimate pressure on me to go out there. Is wrong. Actually, all he told told us to do is say. Love your neighbor. He told us to love the neighbor. What does that mean? I dim I allowed this and attack and attack me right here with you. And then that goes. Then that goes. And, it's and it goes. Is there is there anything wrong with being led to go out there? No. As long as the Holy Spirit's leading me. And not you yourself. Correct. Or other people. Correct. So the sitting and say, what about the people who never heard? Also, who says they never heard? Mm -hmm. And Romans talked about that too. Yeah. So who, 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 who's to say that they never heard it? Because mm -hmm. he's demonstrated so. My mom demonstrates all the time. If somebody comes to my house, she's giving away everything she has to you. And she's basking in it. That you're just filled up. That that's dad. That's Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit. Just demonstrating whether she knows it or not. We, we're talking about that going on a photo shoot, and you're like, "Don't give me all teary eye." Um, <laughs> but that's true, isn't it? Not. I, I love this question. So let's keep going because I'm gonna go. 
I'm going to read real quick, but i got to plug it in something. If you ask, if, if you ask Jesus in your heart and then drift away and die before you repent, will you go to heaven? Now, these all questions are based off of this. I think it's a great question there. I'm going to plug up this thing real quick. I'm going to use our children as an example, and this will help help with the response for this. Um, so we have three children, and can you imagine them asking me or me to be their mommy or you to be their daddy? It's like I was already your mommy and daddy before before you you even asked me before you even came into the picture it was like I loved you before I even knew what your name would be and I know that's that's my, that's kind of mind-blowing but I was already you already had my heart you you were already in my heart so you can't ask him to be there to be in your heart because he's already there with you it's kind of funny. it's a recognition of it and there's something I say repent uh, the definition of what people the church says repent is that I'd be remorseful for my actions turn away from it they think repent means to turn away and stop doing it. stop doing it the, what the re -re -re word repent both Hebrew and Greek doesn't even mean that it means change your mind but let's take what how the church plays the definition of repent look at the parable of the, of the, of the lost son right he goes away. He, he disowns his own dad. Like his act is to say, you're no longer my dad. You're dead, gone, no more. Hebrew culture, he, I mean, even somebody doesn't say, I mean, that's pretty harsh, strong language, but Hebrew culture, that was done. You, you, se you separate yourself, you, in your eyes, you separate yourself from your family. Forever. Forever. When he came home, it says he, he, he tried to repent or whatever. Was he turned away? No, his repentance was selfish as crap. It was no turn. He still was on himself. Now, so that you cross out with the, the church definition of the thing is and go, what does it really mean? It means to change his mind. But he wasn't even doing that. It was just him being selfish. He was just coming home to get a meal in his belly. That was it. And tried to earn his way back to being a son. But what did the father do? What did the father do? Because he wasn't even coming home. He, he still hadn't turned back from his ways. He still wasn't. What did the father do? Was there a separation of relationship? No. He was always... Not in the father's eyes. Not in the father's eyes. He, he was always... This is my son. Mm -hmm. Woo! Put shoes on his feet. Like, that... To say that is to say, somehow, if I'm in Christ... We talked about this last week. In Christ... So I'm in him, so that's where he is. I am. Does he drift away? Does he have to repent to be back in relationship with the Father? No! Now, if I can point something out. Okay. Now. Be my guest. I'll support you. Hi, this is Tim, everyone. Hi. <laughs> this is your assigned spot. Just like if you go to a parking spot and it has your name on it. Nobody else can park there but you, and it's yours. No matter what you do, no matter where you go, this is your spot. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean you can leave this spot? Yes. Mm -hmm. But does that mean that you've left the relationship the Father sees? No. He just understands you're going through either a little pity party or a tantrum, just like kids. How many times, come here, no. Oh. How many times, Josh? <laughs> How many times have y'all heard from the from the girls, I hate you? Never. Well, I mean, I, in that kind in the, of way. Yeah, okay. When they get ticked off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't want anything to do with you right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, they'll say something like that. They're wanting to be out of relationship, right? Can they honestly do that? No. 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 Why? They're, because we're, we're their mommy and daddy. Like, <laughs> the, 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 your family. The, yeah. You can't get you away can't from that. that. You can't erase that. You can't. From the last breath that they ever give, 
and even beyond. They'll still be your kids. Yeah. You know, it was yeah. something that Baxter Kruger had said. You know what he said? He said, I will always be somebody's dad, and I will always be somebody's son. I always will be somebody's uncle. I'll be somebody's great grandfather. I always will be. Mm-hmm. And it's like, we, we talk about, am I always going to be a CEO? No. Are we always going to be doing this? No. Because those are titles. Yes. And positions. Yes. Being a dad is who you are. Mm-hmm. Being a mom is who you are. Being a son, daughter, cousin, whatever, that's who you are. There's something that said that somehow you can change that. You can't. No. You can try to change your last name. You can try to do all this stuff. But you will be. Mm-hmm. That's who you are. Now, Until you recognize that, you never walk in it. Yeah. Now, can you be out of speaking terms or of relationship with that? Yes. Of course. But does that mean you've lost the relationship? No. No. No, because... How many times have you guys been like, okay, I'm not talking to you right now? Even if it's just for a few minutes. Yeah, this time. Yeah. 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 Stuff like that happens. Just on nerves, but yeah. And probably okay. vice versa with all kinds of stuff. But the thing is, <laughs> you may not want to talk to them. They may not be your favorite person. Yeah. But that doesn't mean you're out of relationship. Yeah. What I find to be interesting is in Romans 6, it talks about Jesus having unbroken fellowship or related. The Greek word is relationship. You can do fellowship, whatever. Yeah. It's still the same word. It's relation. It's coin e, actually. Yeah. It, this relationship. He has unbroken. We gotta turn right. That's cool. Oh, that's hilarious. We gotta get to God. Um, but it says that he has that Jesus has unbroken relationship with that. If he has unbroken fellowship and you're in him, what does that say about you? As he is, so are you. Yeah. Like, what does that tell you? That tells you that you have unbroken fellowship or unbroken relationship. I'm broken anything with him. The question is, do you realize that? And when you do realize that, does that make you want to go out and go crazy nuts? No, that makes you go, wow. Because here on earth with people, I sh- the relationships get burned, riches get burned like crazy, but yet you're still here. You never break it. That gets you. It does. I don't care what anybody has to say. It gets you. When it's taking that, it gets you. When you really understand it. Yeah, it gets you. You can, If he can't break it, neither can you. <clears throat> this, this question, uh, will you still go to heaven? And, and it makes me want to ask the question, what is heaven? I'm going to say it's him. I don't, I don't, he never talks about going to heaven, by the way. We can talk about that. Like it talks about the new earth, the, new, yeah, the, the, the merger of heaven and earth. You know, it's like, do you go to this, this new place? Do you go to this place that's all sunshine and you know yeah. there's roses all over the place and you know everything smells great you know it just yeah. and I don't you know I think we need revelation on what what heaven is we or, talked about what it, it, talk, it really is. talks about what heaven and earth is together in a way it's sort of like asking what kind of clothing should a poodle wear when they go to a dance they don't wear clothes Thank you. But so the whole question is a moot point. Yeah. It's like, uh, you know, a plane crashes right in the middle of a um, a border between two countries. Which country do they bury the survivors? You don't bury survivors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really, I really like that. All right, let's keep Take the crash. Mm -hmm. Uh, Can you explain? (coughs) I'll I'll, I'll, I'll extend my. My breath and my saliva as much as I can. I'll let y'all rest. See, look, I'm giving myself away for you. Thank you so much. Uh, can you explain the necessity of necessity of Christ? If God is executing a judgment, that why would why couldn't He also pardon everybody? Now, I, I, I love this question, and I'll say this before we get started. The Father gave all judgment to the Son, and what did the Son say? I judge no one. I mean, I, okay, for this, the, I'm going to break it down twice here. He said, he has all day, but he has given to me, and I come not to what? Judge, mm-hmm. which in terms, they're talking about. He's condemning. Condemning. He does not. But let's look at what the Bible says about the word judgment, and the word judgment is actually a really great, a great term. 
the Hebrew term um, and majority of overwhelmingly the majority of the Greek term too, which means putting you into right relationship. That's great. If you want to say then he execute judgment, then yes, he execute that type of judgment, making you right with that. Yes. But did he come to condemn? No. So pardon, he did. <laughs> if you want to say in one turn, yeah. <clears throat> he allowed himself to be taken our worst so that we can then be adopted. Mm -hmm. Which is beautiful. But I, So can you explain the necessity of Christ? Well, it's that. I would say it's just that. Someone had to bring us home. In a way that we, he did not want us to, yeah. to do. And not to be like the older brother he talks about in Luke 15. Mm -hmm. And why couldn't he also pardon everyone? He did through the son, but not everybody accepts the pardon. Mm -hmm. Correct. So we must then talk about that. I think it's kind of a simple thing, but it's okay. We'll move past some of the questions. I like those. It's still, we're talking about those. Uh, I like this. This one, this one cracked me up when I first saw it. And I was like, I had to put it in there. If a scientist cloned a human, could that human get right with God? <laughs> Jim, you're looking at me. Don't, don't look at me like that. <laughs> we might have somebody come there. Um, just uh, be on the lookout. Um, if a scientist cloned a human, okay, they're going the opposite way. Okay, cool. Uh, could get, could. Could that human get right with God? Okay, this is silly, but not silly. Can a human actually clone himself? I mean, we do it every day. They're in sex, don't we? Mm -hmm. And does not that child be right? You know, didn't Jesus do what he did for them too? But it's interesting even with that. I mean, we have children. It's not... <laughs> it's not us ourselves in our effort that does it, that yeah. makes it happen. Yeah. <laughs> so if we, if we don't make it happen, how could, right. how could we get ourselves right? If we, if we have, I don't want to say we don't have any control because one of the fruit of the spirit is self-control, but it's not through us in our own, our own power that it comes out. Uh, and it's it a result. Mm -hmm. and, and I think, and I think this too, we think that somehow a clone is going to be something they just morph into into a machine that comes out. But you you have to have sperm and eggs connected. All they're doing is, is messing with the genes so that it comes like exact copy of whatever is going in there. That's all they're doing, right? They're, they're minuting that one DNA so one DNA then overcomes it. But is it not still a sperm hitting an egg to fertilize the egg? Yes. So is that not a human being? Yes. And just sitting there and say that somehow that's different than a man and woman getting together and having sex. It's no different. And then sitting there and say he must not have known that the humans were going to do that is a bunch of BS. And who says who says that dad didn't lead a scientist to to do something yeah. in that way with? Because what if it helped out that person? Right. Yeah. Well, we will condemn it and, and call it the hell, but you don't know everything, do we? And that person could get themselves right anyway, so that's why you can't. All right. What does he that believe and is baptized shall be saved mean? I like this one. This is good. You like to take it? I kind of jump on everything here. I don't want to keep squishing what the hands. It, what does it mean to be baptized? Kick over cows and stuff here. Wait, I think we often as we look at, um, well, if I'm baptized in water and we think it's, you have to physically be sum, uh, submerged on the water to be baptized, but I, it, it, it goes a little bit deeper than that. Um, he that believeth in what, is, Okay, so what does the baptizing do? What was the original purpose of it? Anybody? That's a symbol. That's a symbol. Of what was to... It was a, it was a foreshadow it, of what was to Since come. it was a washing, mm -hmm. is it not like a washing of your mind? Like, to, to really think about it? 
it, it, because he said believe and is baptized. I know what verse is talking about is Romans. What was Paul really talking about? Like we can say that he was talking about like realizing this, coming to say yes. I mean, like we think over here, and to then go wait, this is wrong. Not by ourselves, by him helping us to realize this. Is that not like a rinsing, cleansing, realize like coming out of that water? Repenting, type of, change like, your mind. Like, like they, yeah. they, they come in out of the water feeling. Leading from there to here. Or oh, realizing that you were already here. In a sense. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take for you to physically move. And you're believing to, that. To, to change positions. Change positions. And, and that's what the church, and we have to, where you have to get they think baptized means to be, get dunked in the water. Otherwise, you're, you're screwed. You can believe all you want, but you got to be baptized in the water. Like, you got to do it. You better do it before you, before but, you go. You know? But the thing is, it's a symbol. Yeah. It's, just it's a symbol. not less than a symbol. It's not more yeah. than a symbol. It's a symbol. symbol. Correct. Totally correct. What if one of the, what if a missionary goes over to Africa, meets some tribe, um, some guy finds out about it and does all that stuff and then, you know, but doesn't get baptized and then dies. We got one already. There's an example, right? Yeah, I know where it is. On the cross. Thief on the cross. Thief on the cross. Did, well, did Jesus say, he said, now let me tongue to you some water there, sir. Mm -hmm. He says, no, you're in paradise with me. I mean, it was like, dude. This day. This day, you're in paradise with me. Done. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to do it as a symbol, that's cool. And it is, and it is helpful to other believers. Yeah, and encouragement. It is encouragement, but to do it to try to to try it as a step to get there is wrong. Because all you're doing is you're playing the game. You're playing the game that he's not even playing. And we like playing Monopoly by yourself. It's no fun. If not, I don't so like playing Monopoly people. with a bunch of people. <laughs> <laughs> but, but is it fun though? Is it's it fun? Forever. No, I, I, I can tell you this. I have more fun playing video games and game boards with people yeah. than trying to play them by myself. Mm -hmm. Just just not that one. Yeah. Yeah. Pick a different Scrabble. Can I probably play Scrabble by yourself? Yeah. yeah. I haven't played it You while. can, but it's really boring. <laughs> it sucks. All right. So I think that's, then Paul was meaning it more like just a realization of this. You come to a realization of this. That's all he was talking about. Because the next part says, but he that doesn't believe is cursed. Yeah. Doesn't say he that doesn't believe and isn't baptized. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Ah. Why does God always receive credit for the good things in life, but not consider responsible for anything of the bad? I like this. That's a great question. question. You know what? This would awesome you know question. what? I'll, I'll, I'll be real. <clears throat> On really on the surface when you look at the question does it really pertain to this like when you're looking at it, the answer is not really right most people people when they go to the question will say no but it does because I, we, we talked about this what was internal life Jesus said is to know him and to know him there's a two way street to know him and know him because one is how you receive it receiving it and then responding to it that's by knowing him and to see him is to know him and how he's loving you, how he sees you, and how he's stuck. But you're also not just that, you get to realize what's him here and what is not him. So to 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 go to the question itself, why does he receive credit for the good things in life, but not consider responsible for bad? Who says he is responsible? If if he is good, how could he do bad? But the thing is, that's a question against his character and integrity. Correct. Not from a negative standpoint, yeah. but just, just asking. Yeah. And so, if you want to know, I think I, we, we talk about this, like, if you want to know something about somebody, why somebody, certain things, why don't you just ask them? And I think then we go back to what we're talking about here, being face-to-face, -face, the Q and R about being face-to-face, -face, you're face-to-face -face with I can sit here and try to say, I, I think it's one of these questions that it really takes you just talking and asking those questions. 
because I can sit here and blue to my face, but you're going to keep trying to point stuff out. Because yeah. they're not going to try to even ask or listen Correct. to God. So my question is, no, stay right there. You're good. Um, my question is, my, my thing is, you're face to face with him. Some but people aren't taught. I understand. That's why we're doing it today. That's why we're doing it. And I think that comes to that question. If you, if you have that question right now, I think the best thing for you to do is just ask. I think the responsibility, the whole question of responsibility comes in because um, we're taught he's all powerful. He's almighty. If he has the power, then just do it um, or stop it um, or, you know, do this differently. So it's like, well, if you're that strong and, and you know it all, then why would you allow, for one, why would you allow bad to happen? And, I, and, I, and I'll take that because I think we can, we can then, I, I feel like this question can be easily, it, it can be confrontational. I don't want, I don't want that if anybody's feeling like that. It can also lead would, down a whole bunch yeah, of different rabbit yeah, holes. Yeah, and it, and it was something that reminded me who we're going to see today, Wayne. It's a, yeah, a guy approached him, and it's saying you know, we're going to be in today in our little fellowship today this afternoon, and approached him basically with the same question. And he said, "I don't know. Why don't you go ask him?" Yeah. And, and before yeah. Ooh, we finish, uh, be, and he and he said that the guy went off to the corner, went off to the side, and they you know it was just talking discussions and stuff and talking. And he looked over and saw the guy weeping. He felt the urge to go over there and talk to him. He goes, "What happened?" So I asked him. And what happened? He was. He told. Him. He told him. He proved him. And I said, like, "Wasn't proving him wrong. He just was revealing who he really is." And I think sometimes we need that. This. Oh, this might sound kind of weird, but I actually kind of thought of this question because I I don't see the questions. Um, and, yeah, beforehand. I'm the one who does. So, and actually, this this kind of thing came up to me, um, and it, we were in a, in the car. I think it was I think it was yesterday. But anyways, I was I was looking at you in my mind. It's kind of weird, right? Um, and it was like looking at thinking about some of the stuff we've gone through that haven't felt that hasn't felt good, hasn't been pleasant. Um, in my mind, and you are physically stronger than me, um, but I can't look at you like you are res like you are responsible for every unpleasant thing that has happened. Um, but it, but something about just you being there with me, like helps me. So helps me in, in more, in more ways than one, and it's not just me, but it's it's hard to, I don't know, it's, it's hard to be, it's hard to put all that blame on you, and it's hard to be you get to mad, know. yeah, it's hard to be mad at yeah. you for, for everything, yeah. you know what I mean, even yeah. though you, you do, you're powerful, and you do, you can do stuff, but, it's just, so, it's, it's, yeah. it's a good knowing, because I could tell you, like, Tim, we, we, we talk about this and we deal with this and we, we have discussions like this privately when someone we see somebody do something or we hear about somebody or we read something about somebody what's the biggest thing you go well I don't like this and we usually one of us will say what we won't know until we go or talk to them <laughs> it's like you, you're one of us saying that and it's like Oh yeah, and then you go, and you're like, "Well, that's not what I expected." <laughs> or, or also, have you ever thought that something was bad, yeah. and then you changed your mind? We had a yeah. thing. We had something like that happen privately this week, this past week, a couple of days ago. Yeah. And we thought, and it was something, that, and and I like to say that I won this one. Did I prove somebody wrong? I'm sure. But but it, it was we. It was something that we thought you thought would be bad, and it actually it wasn't. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until you actually got, it was like a journey. And you go through the journey and you realize, oh, it's not as bad as I thought. And, but, and what if, before you change your mind, your version of bad 
mixes up with someone else's version of good, yeah. which is the same thing. You just have a different opinion of it right now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's how wars start. That's how breaks in relationships. You know, I just thought about bridge builders. Yeah. This is a this just this is a journey. This is a this is a response through your journey. Yeah, and I, and, I, and again, I like to say if anybody has this question, you're face to face with them. Just ask. Mm-hmm. If you want to get into some, if you want to understand why, why don't you ask them? Why don't you ever consider that, get credit for the bad? Just ask them that. Like I think we'd be like, oh, that's blasphemy. No, ask them. He, He'd be okay. He's okay with answering that. I would even he likes. He loves to answer that question. Actually, because that brings a deeper relationship. Correct. He's not. He's trying to turn away. So, all right, we gotta move. I don't know how many more questions we have. <laughs> no, I love that one. Because I think. Okay. All right. Why does Christianity? Tell me about this. Have the traditions that it has, even though they are not in the Bible. Well, you need to be specific on what traditions. I, I, I totally agree. Yeah. And I kind of get what they're talking about. There's a lot of stuff that we're, you get, like the order of service. You have membership in a church. Membership in the church and stuff. Now, there's nothing wrong with if everybody had their name together. It's all about how you do it. So you sit there and say, putting your names together is bad. It's not in the Bible. I can say, well, it, it, can, be, it can be good in certain purposes. And in the ways it can be good, is it always taken that way? No. That's like anything. Ice cream tastes great, but too much of it is bad. And it's gonna make you sick. Correct. Yeah. So like, I think we have a standard, like the Bible is black and white, it's the end all be all, and you have to look at the Bible and that's it. But then that negates relationship here. Because I can tell you the Bible is very vague on some stuff. What do you do if you have to, if presented with alcohol? Now, there's people who drink. Jesus turned water to wine. He allowed people to drink wine. And that was good stuff. Good stuff. And that wasn't the stuff that was... That, Mashuets. Yeah, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, okay, so what did, what did I do? Well, he's going to help you. It's about relationship. Because it might be okay to take a drink. For you. For you. But he might go, not tonight. Because there's someone else there who's struggling with it and they see that it might, you know what I mean? Or it might be helpful to get somebody, okay, like relax them, that you are a human being. Like when we talk about, we don't know that it's vague. I love it. It's so vague. But, and that's the point because it's inviting you into this. Yeah. To have this, Mm -hmm. to redefine what they know what is good and bad. Because, well, God, He knew everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There's, there's nothing wrong with order. There's nothing wrong with structure, pattern. I mean, you can even look at flowers. There's patterns, you know, all around us. Um, but when it, it's order, like when they know, they know what's right and wrong, and they know how to best um, do it. So when you said something before, what? Let me cut you off. You talk about. People cut the ends of the the, the roast off so and every single time they throw it away or whatever. And, it, and they, they're like, where did this come from? And they go down the line. I'm probably just butchering the crap out of your but story. You're the point. And they find out that great, 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 great grandma did it because the pot she had was too small to fit the whole entire thing. And she actually didn't throw it out. What can we learn about that, though? You learn, well, there's, if you have some of the pots that's small, you can cut the meat. There's, there's actually, there's some good. You can make that tradition. Like, okay, it's too small. That stuff is good. But just to do it, just because somebody else does it, and never realize what's the really meaning behind it. Like what, have to yeah, like what John was doing in the Jordan River was a good thing because it was a symbol. It was a foreshadow. It was talking about what we, you and I were getting ready to step into. What was getting ready to come. It's great. And like you say, it's a great way for the community to come together on that. But if I'm doing it as a step that I need to get right or to get, make sure I don't go to hell because we're scared. That's all we ever do is scared about going to hell. I'm scared about not realizing I'm not love. I mean, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, it's, we, we, we missed the point. 
there's some great stuff. I think singing is beautiful. I think singing, actually, I think it's beautiful. If we come, when we come together, it kind of, it really does allow us to like drop the baggage, doesn't it? When it's like, it's beautiful. It's something so powerful. I mean, God, who, who knew that he would put something so beautiful together like that? It can just drop the baggage. But if we do it as a show, it means nothing. Man, there's something absolutely beautiful about understanding. And out of that, I believe, comes compassion among many other things. Like, going back to the roast beef, it's like, how can you have, like, what do you need compassion for for roast beef? Well, maybe somebody else, they, they cook it, a, you know, very similar, but they don't cut the end off or whatever. You know, it's like you don't have to, to beat them up because they don't do it the exact same way. Yeah. And like if you see us here, you know, we often sing um, before we do certain things like this. Um, you see me up here singing. How do you know that that me standing up here isn't helping me down the road for something else? So, so what looks like religion, what looks like uh, rules and regulations may not be, may not be that. And it takes a, it takes understanding, it takes a change of mind, you know, to, in Revelation to see, and that, to see those things. And I agree with you that I think too much that we treat, and we just want to call stuff religious so much, and it may not be. And my, my, my biggest thing is this too. We were talking about how patterns of what we learn, we end up doing. Right, and you're like, why did you do it? Well, that's all I know, and then you're doing it. So, if you want to talk about religion in the church, my question is: the people who who weren't involved in the religious part of it, why didn't they ever come beside them and just journey with them? Why did they have to come against them? Why did they have to say we're better instead of say I'll, I'll, I'll sit here with you, I'll sit through your your sermons, I'll stay right here. But we go in and go, I right, peace out. You're horrible. I mean, that's what we end you know, up saying. Like, you're wrong. I'm right. You're wrong. I'm coming against you. So let's sit there and talk about, always want to point something. I think, what are you doing about it? We, we had this conversation with, uh, with one of our kids. I'm not going to say who because I don't want nobody getting the wrong thing. But one of them was talking about the other. Like, you know, they did this. They did that. And I said, what, and I just simply asked, what did you do? to help and the answer was nothing I said they don't talk about it until you're willing to help then don't talk help we do that too much we talk about it, we complain so much but none of us are willing to help you know we, we see in the church the church split ministry split because of that stuff it's like why don't you just stay what was so harmful about staying what's so harmful because really, the, if you stay, the best of you actually starts to come out and, and who you really are starts to shine. And I talk about this because this relationship, you're still there. I've been through six church splits. And they're horrible. Only two didn't split away completely because they, um, they came to understand their relationship. Mm -hmm. Yep. And to me, that's beautiful. So, let's keep going. Somebody's waving. Thanks. Christy? Hi, Christy. All right, let's keep going. How do I know that God has forgiven me when I have sinned and feel so guilty? Have you ever felt like you're going to die? Of course. Every you, you you, every, 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 every yeah. freaking <laughs> clog nose and no sleep because of it. Or over hot. Yes. <laughs> Or with, over each, cold. with each labor contraction, mm. Mm. you could feel away with it. It doesn't mean that it's totally okay. true. Mm -hmm. What you could be feeling is that you feel bad for doing something wrong. That's all that's saying. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that you're not forgiving? No. Me and Grace had a conversation. She did something. <laughs> she, just, she just gave us the thumbs up. And she blew me a kiss. Let me see back. She did something. Oh. And you did something. Yep. It hasn't happened for about two years now. Happy anniversary. Nothing. Thank you. No, not yet, not yet. Um, and we had a conversation. She thought 
she she thought I didn't forgive her. She did. And then he doesn't imagine like she did something wrong. And I saw that with her. I'm like, babe. And you were always forgiven. You just didn't realize it. And because you feel the same way doesn't mean that it's not true. I think the same thing here is that we're here. We wouldn't be here if we weren't. And that means everybody. Whether you want it or not, you're still here. But knowing this, that you're still here, helps you to do what? Not to do it again. No one's excusing you wrong. But you're always welcome. You're always welcome in his you're, arms if you you face the face. And that, that's a position that never changes. You're in him if he's always face to face. So are you. Can bad consequences come? Of course, yes. We live Does in the world. Out of yeah. 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 No. And guess what he's going to do? He's going to be right there with you through the whole race. He's never going to leave your side. He's not going to ditch you. He's just going to love on you. And you know what's going to funny is that even in the midst of that, even if you did something wrong and you had to go to jail, we think, oh, he's going to short my sentence now. No, you might go there the whole time. Or maybe something may happen. You may be there longer. Yeah, you might be there. You might, you might have to serve 70 years prison sentence, whatever, right? Or like that mean, 12 years yeah, in prison. It doesn't mean that he is you're not forgiven, but he can still take that time and help you. Relationship. But what about the people around him? What about, like, Joseph, because he was there, he made a difference. That's him turning it all for what? Good. It's not just about you, though. It's about who's around you. What did, what, what did Joseph end up doing? He loved his neighbor as he was loved. I mean, but was it so impactful? Heck yeah. So. And God remembered it. Yeah. Never forgot him. Yeah, I broke it. This is the last question. So it's gonna is struggling to be a Christian a normal experience? I say this one for that. Resoundingly, yes. Yes! <laughs> because it's hard. It's, it's hard. This is, I would say, as simple as it is, it's still hard to know that you're here. Uh, yeah, I think I asked, I was just talking out loud, like, does anyone else have sometimes have young children and you know it gets unpredictable sometimes and the day gets away from you and you feel like you need maybe a few more hours in the day to get things done and you know and, and someone else does anyone else have a business and and you know and, and it's you sometimes you feel like you're alone in this because other people aren't seeing everything that you're going through and everything that's you know being done or even said um, but we were just talking about this a few like hour ago. Like you're not, you you truly can't be alone. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, babe. Come on. But it's people, okay. Again, this goes back to what people don't understand. God is a rewarder. That struggle is also for rewards for later. People don't realize that. Yeah. Now is God. Yeah. Life happens. Yeah. Life is full of really cool things and really not so cool things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But during that struggle, are we going to him or are we trying to fight it in our own strength? Right. And if we go to him, we overcome. Yeah. And it says, blessed are the overcomers, not blessed are the avoiders. Yeah, that, to sit here and think that this is easy, and we're not sitting here struggling. I, I think the normalcy is the struggling to do right, and that and that's where I think no, that's a no. 
because let's talk about that. There's a difference between struggling to do right and struggling to remember this. There's a difference. One is you're trying your best to do it yourself, and you're trying to do what's right all the time, and you're not going to do it. Good luck with that. Yeah. There is a struggle here because what we think here, we've been here. We, we, we think that we're here. We grew up thinking this. And to have that to change, it's, it is tough. Because it does, in a sense, blow your mind. And not always in a feel-good way. Blow mind can feel great, and sometimes it can feel just terrible. It's like, where the hell? It's like waking up from a coma. Where the hell am I? Yeah, or realizing I've spent 20, 30 years doing it this way. Yeah, and was so it was that really... Mean everything I've done is for nothing. It's all a lock. Correct. And it, it, it's hard. It, it really is hard. But he already knows that. And that's why he's here. That's why he's like, I'm here. I want you to know them too. And I want, to know, I want you to know where you're at. I want to help remind you. You, you said reminders are coming because I'm the ultimate reminder. I'm going to, what did you say? He's going to help you remember all that I've taught. What he really teach? What it means to be a son. Yeah. And, and to be loved. And to be loved. And then I think that, and he goes, I got you. Don't worry. And you're going, you're going to struggle. I think I, there was a, there was a, a teacher that I had that said, this is going to be an awesome class and it's going to be, it's going to be great, but you're going to struggle through it. That's what the teacher said. I'm warning you now, you're going to struggle. There's going to be times in this where it just feels like this. Girls, girls. Shh. Uh, there's going to be times in, the, in this class you're going to feel like quitting because it's, it's, it's tough. And you're going to forget things. Sometimes things are going to come up on tests that you forgot it happened. It was taught like three or four months ago that it's going to be up and you're going to you're going to be like, oh crap. And you're going to have trouble. No, no, your voice did. And it's going to be tough. And it, you know what he said then? He goes, but I'm here. And we're here for each other. He goes, my, my suggestion is to partner up with you, everybody, and come together and to help each other. And that was beautiful. And, that, and that, guess what? It was a great class. Was there tough times? Hell yeah, there was tough times. Classes. It was tough questions and tests and all this stuff. But if we didn't come together to help one another, no, it's what made it. Many, yeah, many of us uh, believe that the blessed life, or if we get right, um, <coughs> we repent and turn our turn ourselves over to Jesus. That um, that that means uh, everywhere I go, people will. Kind of bow before me. I'll get this discount here. I'll get this free over there. I'll get um, I'll get all this money. I'll get the big house. I'll get the cars. Everything that man thinks is a sign of success. And, yeah, and I'm every as Tim said, everything that man thinks is a sign, a, of, a sign of success. Um, and we think it's. That's that's the cakewalk. Like that's what makes it sweet. That's what makes it makes it attractive. That's what makes it easier to say yes to to Jesus because of the things we're gonna get. And there's a struggle. There is a struggle with even with that because well, that's not what it's. That's not what about. About. We, that's, we talked about this last week. He says you have inheritance. What does that mean? We think it means the. The, the, the nice house, the cars, I get the menu and everything. He's not talking about that. He's talking about this. You're an inheritance of this. You get to be... Other people. Yeah. You get to have this beautiful relationship. Like, no other. That's your inheritance. Like, that is in all be all. It's not about money. It's not about the cars. It's about this. And I think we struggle with that. Because I want the cars. And we struggle... With trying to get that, trying working so hard to try to get those things. Yeah, and Americans yeah. do. Yeah, people in other countries don't necessarily. They have different struggles. Yeah. That look, look yeah. a little bit different. Yeah. They have different struggles. And so, like, I, I love that because like, that that shuts it down, man. When 
when you start to realize, he, when he's talking about a lot of stuff, it, it puts some perspective. What am I really chasing? And why? Why? My gosh, like, I, I get to have the best thing ever. So it goes from what, so much of what am I supposed to be experience, experiencing to who am I supposed to be experiencing? And I, I, I do believe that our struggles are going to be a little different. But I, I think overall, in general, it's similar. But they can be a little different. It depends on where we're at in life. It's where we're at in our journey. What we're going to be struggling with in this visit. Remembering that we're here. And the good news is, you got him. I love the position because he's like taking your hands and hey, here's that. You know, it's like, hey, let me help you. And it's, it's beautiful. Like, if you, ever, if you ever did counseling, anybody ever done counseling, like good counseling, they will take the two people who have issues and they put them face to face. And the counselor sits right in the middle. And the counselor brings them together. Now, I don't want you to think that he's mad at you. He's not. But what he's doing is helping you to understand him. For you to know him. It's like a beauty. He calls him what? Counselor? That's why it's so beautiful. He's right there with him. And Jesus is like, let me help you. Let's do it together. Struggle? Is it real? Yes. But you're not alone. And that's good. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. So, we had the last question in. Uh, I'm just making sure there's nothing there that I'm overlooking. Um, we had the last question. I think that was Yeah, okay. and I think we're going to begin a new topic next week and then correspond Q and Q and R with it as we go. I think it's beautiful to talk about something and then a lot of questions to rise in with it. And we might have, we might, we might do a couple messages and then do a and r on all of it. We might break down the and r in between. We'll see how it goes. Depends on you. <laughs> it depends on all of that, how we end up doing that. And we want to make sure that we, it's something, because I think we're going to talk about light and darkness. I feel like kind of a good topic to really talk about. It, we're still here. It's just breaking it down a little bit. And and so, well, it's, and it's different parts. Like, you feel different parts. So we'll try, try to do, I believe we'll try to do the human art and there's different parts too before we move on to another part so that we can make sure that we're all kind of like walking together and stuff. So, um, I think it's good for us to do all that. But with that, we're going to have an amazing week. You can't yet. It's not up yet. With that, we're going to go have enjoy ourselves. Um, I'm going to find some sleep in between now and three. I don't know how. Just let it happen, Jesus. Uh, with that, we love you. I'm going to say that like a question mark. No, we love you. We, we thank you for like putting you out here. We're going to get going. Uh, we thank you for joining us in, kind of getting into it. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for questions and then just listening and just being part of it. Um, that's to me so beautiful and wonderful with it all. But with that, 